Boy, this was a long outro of that music, I didn't expect that. So hello guys, welcome to Showtime, episode number 4. Just trying a new intro music there, and hello guys, we have of course here B1, like always, the master of the show. And also Fana, who is constantly talking and giving us all the precious input we need. And since crime is on summer vacations, we have special guest Mendas being in here as well. So hello to all of you. Hi guys. What's up? My name is Grime. <laughs> <laughs> you have a Grime soundboard? <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, That's so epic. this is the perfect ep opportunity to tell us if someone's voice is too low or too high, so just type in the chat right now so I can um, fix the volume, which is hopefully there. It was a little bit stressful right before the show to get everything done because. Yeah. Yeah, he already. I think uh, some uh, somebody was asking or saying earlier that my uh, volume might be a bit low. So and me is Fana. So if you can't really hear me, um, type in the chat so he can raise my volume. Okay, so I'm doing the same. My mic getting a little bit lower. I hope this is better, so I'm not screaming too loud while the rest is pretty much low. All right, so professional sound pro testing. professional sound testing <laughs> indeed, yeah, which you usually do before the show and then like at the start of the show. But hey, here we go. So we absolute professionals. But um, for today's show, we have tons of good content, or at least some very good topics. Some of that was is a big announcement, and you can already read a little bit there if you check out for that. And I think I also read in the chat, basically just hitting the news trigger at the same time with Unknown Worlds. And but we will go deeper into that pretty much later, so don't leave yet because there's much information about to talk about. Um, the first, what we will start today is, I mean, we have several cups going on all over the time, but the last recent one was the Nations Cup, and we don't want to talk too much about it, but we still want to give you a little bit of roundup information about this one. So, which was, yeah. There we go. Nations Cup, the NSL Nations Cup, and we also have winner. NS1, what were we? Going back in time here? What? NS1 or is that NSL? You said NSL? Well, it sounded like NS1. What the? <laughs> Maybe you just wanted it to be NS1. Maybe. Oh, God. Maybe. Oh, yeah, and I also have to correct you, uh, Blind. Actually, Sweden won the first NS1. Not uh, Finland. No. No, that's not true. Germany no, won the first true. one. It's true. Germany won the first one. I but know, like this, the, the only reason is because all the good Finnish players actually left because the World of Warcraft came out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, oh, 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 that's always. Yeah, I remember a reason. it was a bit of an upset, but that was the that was was that the 2005 or the 2004 one? I can't remember. I think it was 2005. Long ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was 2005. I'm pretty sure of it because I remember you were all uh, Bobby won uh, NS1 World Champion. Brr. Brr. And I was just sitting there going, oh, "Fuck you." Okay. Because, you know, I didn't have a fucking team to play with. <laughs> yeah, no GPM, yeah, man. There's, <laughs> there's no scene in Norway, poor guy, yeah. So we're just doomed to spectate the whole thing. It's just Team No. Team Nope. Alright, so, the winner! Well, will... Yeah. Yeah, go, go, Bobby, go, by all means. No, so I just wanted to ask uh, Mendes what happened to uh, Spain. Oh. A bit of drama there, yeah. Oh, what was oh, going on the, with that? Big question. Um, so. <laughs> Basically, we signed up the entire playing Spanish community, everyone that's playing the game in Spain. And um, we had a problem. Uh, we reached the day, we have to play, and we have five. So we started panicking, and um, like five minutes before the game, we finally convinced someone who had left the game uh, already. So he had to <laughs> play again for the game. But basically, uh, we had like 11 players signed up, but people didn't show up and we could only play one game. That's pretty much it. Quite sad, actually. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, really. Like, having having to convince someone that has, like, left NS2, it's uh, pretty sad already at the last minute, so, yeah. Kinda unfortunate, because I really thought yeah. Spain would come, like, at least to the semi-finals. With that team, I, I don't know about the semi, but maybe yeah. I counted uh, Spain as one of the dark horses, a possibility. I think we could have made it uh, like past the group stage. I believe we could have done that, but um, yeah, definitely like, past the group stage. 
like um, I think Alcalde couldn't play that weekend, and we didn't really want to reschedule or anything. So we actually, just... no, you were in the group with Germany and Finland. That might have been tricky, actually. E like, yeah, but I think you we would have had a have... chance against Germany, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm. Talking about Germany, I really hope they would perform a little bit better in the semis or at the end in general. Really pushing that, but um, it didn't happen. They got pretty much ruffle stomped by Finland. Yeah, but I mean, they they were up against Finland. They yeah. well, it isn't unlucky because they got the second seed in their group, but um, um, but and then they they faced Canada in the quarterfinals okay and they beat Canada that's pretty nice i mean canada is a team that might be tricky to beat for germany i don't was that a default win actually i can't remember uh, uh in any I case so. it, canada who uh <laughs> canada who in canada. any case they, they came up against finland in the um, in the semifinal which is of course terrible um finland was the dominant team by far in this cup and uh, as expected they went all the way and i think losing 4-0 to finland in a tournament like this I, you can't really feel too bad about yourself yeah well it had a lot of potential for a lot of teams but it's also it was too close to summertime so yeah as technically says the canada versus germany game was a forfeit win for germany yeah. So I was a bit surprised that was a 4-0, because I, I would think Germany and Canada would be pretty close. Um, but yeah, maybe we should just... Uh, and then, I, I don't know if uh, that's what I said, so but yeah, they dropped, uh, Spain dropped out and forfeited most of their games. I think you played one match? We Yeah, we played against Finland. Yeah. 4-0. Well. <laughs> uh, <Yeah>, although... <laughs> <first game>. yeah. <laughs> although we had uh, one or two close runs, and then we just like uh chased our way through the last uh two in the sand. Yeah I was watching yeah, and that then I you, um, think and then was... you dropped out. But like we played in Vale and their base was really open and they didn't be come back. It was a really weird weird game. Uh with us as aliens. Uh but yeah, I don't know. You never know. We we'll never know. Yeah, I mean you always have a chance <laughs> to do anything some things with the base rush and whatnot. Um, at least it was but... much closer than versus Germany, at least from what I've seen. Um, but about the, the tournament in general, of course, Finland won it in the end, beating France in the final. Um, it was pretty expected, of course. I mean, uh, before the in the Showtime episode, before the tournament, we were talking about who we thought were going to go to the semifinal, and I think we all said Finland and France would be in the semifinal, and, well, it turns out they were, and we I think we all thought Finland were going to win it too, and it turns out, yeah, Finland did win it. So it wasn't really a big surprise there. Um, the expected best team won, and... I actually thought France was going to win. Oh, you did? Oh, that's, yeah, because oh, they played crazy. really well. I mean, they were playing all the time. Like practice yeah, every day. I guess you didn't look at PCW results though, because I looked at the results uh, from practice matches between uh, France and Finland, and uh, it wasn't all Finland wins, but uh, Finland did have uh, more wins than losses by far against uh, France in the practice matches. Yeah, okay. And looking at the lineups, France had a really solid lineup, but uh, Finland's is just stronger, and the Finnish lineup has a lot of practice playing together. So. I, I think it was just a case of one team being just that that marginal bit better than every other team and just rolling off of that um, that momentum they gained. Um, so all of that was kind of expected as far as I'm concerned. We had some really good games though. Um, what I'm more interested in talking about is what was surprising in this tournament, or if not surprising, at least more unexpected. Um, and I'm just going to start off. Uh, I was uh, very positively surprised with Sweden. Uh, of course, I thought they were going to do... I should, say, I should say you, because uh, B1's here and he played for Sweden. Um, I, I thought you guys were going to do well. I thought you were, uh, like Spain, a uh, dark horse. Um, and you got to the semifinal, and you did really well against France. I think you lost 3-2, was it? And, uh, you lost by a tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah and that's just really solid. And I watched some of the games, and I know that uh, the first round you lost, it was... You could have won that. Um but you sort of messed it up. Yeah, well, um, Scrimes tactics was like uh, cheese every marine round <laughs> to win. <laughs> uh, so we did, and it's like we won the first. No, we, I mean uh, we won the second marine, I think. Yeah. Uh, on summit, but yeah, the first one, uh, or maybe it was the other way. Anyway, we lost one on descent. I remember it was uh, we lost Kokakai in the middle of uh, hydro. We were relocating. 
and that's so we were just four people moving on to the high for shock and push and that's that's not really enough so but we just went for it didn't work so we lost it yeah yeah i don't remember the exact rounds but i remember um you lost the first round and then you won the two next rounds it was 2-1 and then france yeah, yeah. won the next round to tie it up and then france won the tiebreaker um, I remember Skugan was, uh, well, I wouldn't say furious, but he was a bit annoyed after the game because he thought he <laughs> should have won the first round, which would have made it a 3-0, which would have been insane. Um, but instead it was a 3-2 to France. But still, I think that was a really solid showing from Sweden, and that surprised me. Or it didn't surprise me, it wasn't entirely um, expected, and I like to see that. So kudos to Sweden. Kudos to Skrine. <laughs> Jeez, that. <laughs> oh, you, won, uh, you won an alien round too. Yeah, that's true. I was actually surprised we played really well on descent, uh, but you know it's a huge map as well. So. Wait, really? you were you were surprised that you played well? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, but um, uh, we actually changed it because we had uh, I think we had Vairi and some other guy lurking. We had like two lurks or something, and then we just changed it up. We didn't do any lurks. We just went for like the four or five eight strats. Just go straight for fate. It worked out kind of well. And I also want to say that, I mean, one of the things I mentioned before in the last showtime, so was, I was a bit uh, unsure about Francis Calm Rios. I, I said he was the, um, I, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I said something like he was possibly the weak link or the the one we don't know anything about. Yeah, I um, remember. remember. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I don't know how well he did. You'd have to talk to the French players. Um, but what I did see was that he had really good meds. He was hitting a lot of his meds very often, and I could just see the, the players on the other teams uh, France were playing against. He's really frustrated because the Marines just weren't dying because all the meds were hitting. Um, so I think he proved that uh, um, there was no reason to fear his uh, that the quality of his commanding was poor before the tournament. He uh, he seemed to do well. And of course, that helped France get to the final and also be competitive in the final against Finland. Yeah, absolutely. So, a kudos uh, to Rios. And uh, well, that's what I have to share. Um, does anybody else have anything like surprising or unexpected or anything they want to remark? Yes. Uh, I'm currently working right now as we're, <laughs> we're talking uh, on a highlight video for Nations Cup. Uh, it's probably the worst video I ever made. But... <laughs> Down fragmentally, hell yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's just uh, small highlights, maybe five minutes or something. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't finish it for the show, but uh, it's going to be up after the show uh, on YouTube somewhere tonight, so you should check it out. YouTube somewhere. Just, small just, just, just go on YouTube.com and search randomly yeah. through every video. <laughs> You'll find it eventually. Uh, it's going to be on blind YouTube. The link is right here on Twitch. Yeah, we'll put it in the VOD of this episode. We just edited it in, so hopefully it doesn't look too weird. It's just somewhere in the middle of the stream, it pops in in the middle of this video. Just professional editing, you know. Now it will be at least there to watch, so... It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not close to professional, but it's worth it. It does the job. Okay, so talk about the Nations Cup. I think I also um, don't have their much left. I mean, I really enjoyed the finals. It was so much fun casting up. And the semifinals, unfortunately, I did miss. France was a Sweden because it was also really that match I was looking for. But yeah, the Finns taking the crown and... I mean, is there any... Na I, and Oh, wait. Um, the Finnish team basically was the complete Sonomen lineup, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't it? They had Lama as well. Ah, okay. From what I can recall. Lama is now Sonoman. He came from actually HD, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's the only switch, but the rest I was watching was pretty much Sonoman <laughs> taking over with Peachum. Um, yeah, and all those players with Tain, for example. And yeah, convincing victories there. That was a blast to watch. And yeah, so much for the Nations Cup. I think we can conclude that one and just move on to the next one, which would be. What is that? Um, oh, oh, there we go. The C news. Actually, oh yeah, some interesting topics there um, about the current uh, change of the competitive scene. I mean, you can start right off with Akir. 
Um, they did not only put up a new website, but they only the also the complete roster changed, and or so maybe finally you want to give some input about what's going on with Arkea currently. <laughs> Actually, the website's been up for two months. So I just haven't advertised it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh, teamarkea.com, um, if anybody wants to see that. It's got uh, some random info, some pictures and stuff. It's not amazing, but it has links to all of our um, recorded games, if anybody wants to see those. And also a news post about what's going on with Arkea. Um, I'll post the link in the chat afterwards. Once I'm done talking. And I like to talk, so it might take a while. So just <laughs> Yeah. Shot. All right, so Arkea, um, as most of everybody knows by now, we've had some problems lately. Um, there's been a lot of talk for a long time about Tain leaving, of course. Uh, he's been a bit ambivalent, saying yes, no, yes, no, maybe, I don't know. Um, but he finally decided that he wanted to... Well, I'm not sure what he's going to do. He's been talking about quitting the game. He's been talking about playing with uh, Solomon. I'm not sure what he's going to do yet. I assume he's going to start playing with Solomon once summer's over. Whatever. So we lost Tain. Uh, backstabbing bastard, um, and, um, and then um, and then the sort of the surprise happens because okay, losing ten isn't a big problem. Uh, we're down to seven players. We can maybe recruit one more player, whatever. Of course, he's a great player, so we don't want to lose him. But it is what it is. But then suddenly, uh, Ray decides he wants to start a new French team, and uh, he uh, decides that hey, uh, I want to bring Eagle too. And Eagle's like, yes, I want to play with the French people, oh yes. And uh, yeah, so we lose both Eagle and uh, Ray as well. Uh, and I blame the Nations Cup for this, Blind. This is your fault. Yeah, it's all um, my fault. Yeah. Yes, blame we're Blind. To, uh... Always my fault, everything that happened. <laughs> everything is Blind's fault. So now we're down to five players, uh, and we're sitting with five players, and we're thinking, well, fuck, what, what's gonna. Well, this is no good. We can't play with five players, obviously. Um, we were thinking about taking a summer break anyway, I have to say. So um, we were actually not going to play at all this summer regardless. But then this tournament that we're going to talk about came up. Uh, and we were like, okay, maybe we want to play after all. But now we don't have any players. What are we going to do? And we sort of looked at the, the options we had. Maybe we could recruit some new players. Um, I don't think we really had any amazing options. Uh, none of which would be as good as the players we lost, but we did see some options that were like some players who could potentially be as good as the ones we lost. Um, I, uh, there's a lot. Of, there are a lot of players in the in other teams, and some free agents who have a lot of potential, but um, uh, that we might have been interested in. So we went around asking a few people if maybe they'd be interested, but we didn't really get any bites, which was a bit surprising, but I guess people like the teams they're playing with right now, so that's that. Uh, we're stuck with five players, and we can't play with five players, so we're basically um, dead at the moment. Um, we haven't really decided if we're folding yet, or if we're gonna try to do something after summer. Uh, so we're basically on break. Uh, Arkea has basically taken a summer vacation. Uh, maybe we'll be back uh, after summer, maybe we won't, we don't know yet. So, what did uh, Scrime say before he left? Uh, what do you mean before he left? I mean, he he, uh, he said he's going on a complete NS2 break, so that's why he's not even here for uh, Showtime as well. I mean, did he, what did he say for uh, <laughs> Oh yeah. For yeah, he's been talking about taking a break for a long time. I mean, he has been putting in so many fucking hours for, uh, yeah, yeah. for this team and a lot of other stuff too. Uh, it's been pretty insane, actually. He's He's been the the engine behind Arkea all along for a year now, and he's been doing so much work. So he basically just needed a break, and when all this shit happened and we uh, couldn't really find any new players, and it was all just a really depressing situation, so I think he just decided, fuck this, I, I am taking time out. Um, so yeah, I don't think we'll be seeing him um, for a while. I'm not entirely sure when he's going to be back. He basically just said that he's going on summer vacation. And he's gonna mm -hmm. work out and stuff. I guess he wants to get buff. <laughs> okay. uh, good for him. Nice. Um, <laughs> that's, that's all I know, really. Okay. Okay, so. I for mean, the record, go. we're. Uh, like, Goddard is also. Uh, we were looking for people and we were also having trouble finding extra players because we're exactly six at the moment. So I can see how they're having problems because we are also having problems finding people. It's like I don't know, the summer just kills the game. Yeah. 
I mean, everybody is having problems right now because it's summer inactivity. We are getting into the worst part of it now. It's mid June. Uh, by early July, it's gonna be real. It's gonna be uh, tumbleweed zone uh, by early July. Uh, that's how it always is, and um, yeah, that's how it is. Um, and then things pick up once uh, summer's over. That's like how it went the whole time for NS1 as well. A history of natural selection, some are pretty much dead, and then in the fall, when the temperature is falling, people come back and realize, hmm, let's play and shoot a little bit more. Yeah. It seems likely the history is going to repeat itself. We don't know, though, NS2 is a different game, and uh, the player numbers have been pretty depressing uh, <laughs> lately. Um, so I guess we'll see what happens. Maybe there won't be a game to play during fall. Maybe there will. Uh, it's hard to predict these things. But if if history repeats itself, which it usually does, um, things will be active again next fall or coming fall. Um, so yeah, um, about Arkea, just just finished that shit up. Um, we lost some players who decided they wanted to play with their country mates, which I mean I can't fault them for that. Um, we've had a great run at Arkea. I loved playing with those guys. Um, so thanks to them for a really great year. Um, and I mean the the five players who are still interested in playing were taking a break. Uh, some of us are gonna play in cups this summer. Uh, Skugan's gonna play in the balance cup with Meow. Um, I might play with them. I haven't 100% decided yet. I'm a bit short on time right now, and a bit short on motivation too. I think I need a summer break too to decide if I want to keep playing NS2 or not. Um, so yeah, basically uh, the, the the story about RK right now is we are on summer vacation. See you. After summer, maybe. So, although that's pretty sad, it's also an opportunity for other teams to take some crowns, take some tournaments, which usually Akia won all over the time. So, that might be also an, a good opportunity there for the scene at the same time. It's not the only change, I mean, there's more changes. As you talked already about um, Ray and Eagle Eye forming a new team, basically, whole halfway team France in the Nations Cup, which is a pretty strong new team. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff happening, obviously, and yeah. there's going to be more stuff happening. This is the summer cycle. Uh, every summer in NS1, we would have uh, a repeating cycle of a lot of teams dying, and then once summer, end, summer ended, um, a lot of new teams would form, uh, like taking the, the wreckage from the teams that died, and the uh, old teams would reform, and all sorts of crazy shit would happen, and that's probably going to happen again. And of course, uh, Arkea dying or not being active for a while um, is going to maybe create more competition, which might be interesting. I mean, we have been unnaturally dominant for a year now, um, which might not be entirely good for, um, well, the fun of the spectators or the other teams or whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, so it will be interesting to see how things are when we don't participate. Um, about race team. The French team. I'm not sure if they have a name yet. They they're going by weight by yes. and legendary and lots of stuff. Um, legendary snails. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I, they might change. I'm not sure if it's because they're using a strange tag. Well, whatever. They're called legendary snails right now. It's basically Team France minus a few players. But right minus now they Rios. only have exactly, yeah, minus Rios and some other guys. They don't have Pipo and I don't remember exactly. But they they only have six players right now. So they're exactly at six players on their roster. I don't yep. think they have anyone they're planning to recruit right now, not that I've heard anyways. Um, and Ray is actually commanding for them, because they don't have a proper commander. Uh, and that's a big blow to them, of course. I mean, Ray is a decent commander. I played with him as a commander for a few times, and he was alright uh, when he was speaking in English. And I'm sure he's even better when he can do it in French. Um, so that might be alright for them, but they are losing out on one of the best lurks, <clears throat> since obviously he can't lurk when he's um, commanding. Or at least not effectively. Um, yeah. And he's also a solid Marine, so they're losing out on one of their best Marines too, because he's stuck in the comm chair. And that hurts them, obviously. <laughs> he's stuck in the comm chair, well. At least he doesn't drop armories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It had to come. Yep. Oh, okay. I'm glad you remind us all, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget. Never yeah. forget six. I got an interesting question. I'm just going to do that quickly from the chat. Some uh, the runt is saying, "Who the hell were Solomon? Uh, Solomon are basically, or was basically, or is basically. Uh, well, in NS1, they were one of the maybe five or six legendary teams. Um, 
yeah, probably tied with uh, Knife and uh, Nine Legends for most legendary team, if you want to call it something like that. But um, they've won a lot of stuff, basically, and were an amazing team over a long period of time. Um, and a lot of those players have returned for NS2. They haven't really been as active. They haven't really been at their NS1 level. Um, yes. But maybe they will be now. Who knows? That's the biggest part. Yeah. Always when I watch Sonaman, I feel there's so much unused potential. It really feels Peachum is not so in NS2. Combined, really, there. Or also Marco completely underperforming compared to what he did in NS1 or also other players. We, on the other hand, outstanding performance. Um, I think he wasn't in NS1 active, so... Yeah, we is a new, he's an NS2 player. I don't know if he played NS1 at all, but at least not competitive, unless he's changed his nickname. I've never played against him, at least. Um, yeah, they have a lot of players who were amazing in NS1, including Peachum, who was, well, he's widely regarded as the number one com. Uh, I have a few other candidates for that position, but he was really a really good commander. Um, and of course, uh, Nade was a uh, really good uh, Marine and Lurk, and uh, several other players. Now they're going to have Tain too, probably. Um, but yeah. the, the, their main problem, I think, has been they're not very active. They don't practice a lot. I mean, during tournament uh, periods, they've been playing one or two pieces of a week max, and that's just not enough. Um, I think they, they are at the point in their lives where they don't have that much time for computer games, at least many of them. Um, or maybe they're not just, just not that motivated for NS2. Um, and you can't perform at the top level if you don't practice enough, it's that simple. Yeah, that's right. So there's also more changes going in the American scene as well. Pretty interesting, I think, personally, is, I mean, at the Season 2 ending in the finals, Breakfast Club actually did beat Nexel. Yeah, that right, was a huge upset. Yeah, and right after that, the fold. They just left. You cannot, you cannot <laughs> yeah, top that. that. They were, like, really. living on a high. <laughs> that's, that's... Yeah. It does make some sense. Yeah, it's like Akira. We could play with like four players and a half decent team now, or we just take the break and we don't screw our titles. We oh, had like a million players. <laughs> but here's the thing: they they folded, but now they haven't folded after all because they've signed up for the Balance Cup and they have like twenty players on their roster. Just in case. It's more than twenty. I mean, it's like thirty players. It's insane. Okay, I stand corrected then. Yeah, I thought they'd fall a little bit apparently, they haven't, I don't know what's going on. But uh, yeah, they, they beat Nexel, surprisingly, uh, with a complete blowout in the final for the uh, NSL Season 2 American Division 1. Um, and of course, Nexel have been a dominant American team for a year now, so that is a bit surprising. Um, I don't know exactly what went on, but I think, uh, from what I hear, Nexel lost uh, a lot of players, and they've been a bit inactive. Uh, I know that several of the players have actually quit NS2. I know that uh, Blink doesn't play anymore, and uh, Garfu doesn't play either. Um, and they lost Gorgeous to Damage Networks. So... Where is Breakfast Club? You're saying they're playing B team? Yeah, I can't find no, it. No, Breakfast Club. Oh no, I'm talking about Damage Networks. Oh god, I messed up. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's terrible. Oh, no, uh, yeah, uh, Breakfast Club have disbanded apparently. I am talking about Damage Networks. Uh, okay, not Breakfast okay. Club, yes. Okay. Yeah, that was the third dominant um, US team. And then we have also the Canadian All-In, or is it almost purely Canadian or mostly Canadian All-In? I don't quite remember. I thought so. Okay, the chat will correct question. me if not. But I thought that it was... I can check not. quickly if I can find them here. They were... Where have they gone? Well, we're waiting. I can provide some piece of European clan scene news, and it's Bonkers has switched clans to Joe oh clan. Oh my god! Oh, no. What do you, what do you guys think about that? Well, I think is he a commander still? Looking out for Joe clan now. Yeah, he's a he's a commander still. Oh. As as far as I know. It's a good thing I quit because uh, it's going to be pretty hopeless. <laughs> Oh, this is strange. Um, the uh, new all-in team was signed up for the balance mod go, but now I can't yeah. find them in the list. No, they dropped no, out. No, they, they, they dropped. Oh, they dropped yeah. out. Okay. They were in our group, and this is like. Um, by the way, our group is amazing because um, we are yeah, nice European, <laughs> and then we have three American clans and one <laughs> Australian clan, and I'm delighted to do the scheduling for the matches. 
I'm having and such a fun time. I think are like uh, American Division Two teams. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's but... it's it's scheduling the matches. It's uh, yeah, yeah but... that's painful. Um, this uh, <laughs> Australian team uh, might be interesting to play against, though. I With uh, two hundred fifty being. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about because <laughs> um, it's going to be uh, the ping is going to be an issue, obviously, and um... yeah. And the time we have to play is uh, like uh, um, 1 p.m. for us. Yeah, that's nice. So that's really strange. Well, the good news is if it's um, if the ping makes a huge difference, then it's going to be a 2-2 after two maps, and then you're going to have a tiebreaker. So at least it's going to be a bit later in the day before you get to the exciting <laughs> match. Well, yeah, considering the balance in the balance test right now, a lot of the matches might be yeah. alien ties. So. Yeah, this is going to be... Uh, I, uh, I'm not sure if I wanted to talk too much about this, but it might be a painful cup. Um, yes. The balance and the balance mod, it's not really... It's, it's not a balance mod at the moment. It's more like a feature mod. Uh, the balance is pretty heavily skewed towards aliens. But I think every piece of W I played against with teams of somewhat equal skill, it's been a tie. It's been like impossible yeah. to win marine rounds. Like um, from what we've played, uh, even if we play horrible, because we've been inactive for a while, um, we mess up, we lose all our fates, and we can still win as aliens, no problem. Like yeah. there's there's something wrong. Yeah, there's, you can... it's just it's not it's not working. There's a lot of interesting pieces, but they haven't come together yet. Um, yeah. Hopefully, Sulek gets some answers from this cup so he can. Adjust things. Well, that's quickly. basically the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like the chat said, uh, legend legendary snails are playing twats right now. PT mod. It's uh, Koan, Seda, and Iros casting it. Yeah. By all means, watch that match. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty boring match now. Yeah, watch no your replay. to teamwork watch and us. tactics, but um, <laughs> the French team is yeah. a bit on a different level than them. But it's uh, if you want to watch it, it's a good way to see how teams play uh, the balance mode at least. But you're gonna have a lot of matches coming up, so I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of matches. This whole weekend is full of matches and packed, and there's also I think much closer yes. matchups in general to watch them. But by um, all means, if you want to go, yeah, as you said, just finishing up the uh, clan movement thing. I was actually uh, interested to hear that um, Godar have some inactive players. Um, who who's inactive? Mr. Mendasp. Um, um, it's not that like um, we're exactly six because we were seven, but one of Your our members. God damn roster says eight. <laughs> <laughs> eight. Well, but Big Rust is there and he's not really a player. Okay. He's just he's recording. Uh, he's the official official <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yes. He's like well, he used to be the commander for Godar, but when you have a new commander, then. The old one has to do something else, <laughs> but oh, he's, uh, well, we're all friends. Well, it's, it's, not a, it. it's not a problem. <laughs> I hope it's not a problem at least. So, yeah, but um, one of our members doesn't really quite like the balance test, which is strange because everyone else does like it. Um, and this break hasn't helped much. So we're basically six active at the moment. Yeah, six is pretty so, painful to play with. Yeah, Unless everybody it's... is like incredibly active, and during summer nobody is incredibly active. And the problem is like, for example, this weekend for our matches, I'm having a lot of trouble scheduling because we don't have one player for the weekend, so I have to move everything to Friday, and now suddenly I have one less for Friday, and I'm going crazy doing the times and everything. Mm. It's not very fun having only six. Yeah. Um. All right, so that's interesting to know. Um, some, some, uh, some, some potential changes in uh, Goad are coming up. Um, then there's Duplex, of course. Duplex oh. Resurgent, the new Duplex. Again, the like Duplex the Reborn. Duplex, actually, a lot of the same players. Um, they got Swag Trippy. Yeah, he's been on the roster before. Skit's been on the roster before. Yeah, Danny Folix has all been on there. I mean, Folix is one of their oldest players. Everyone has been on there the before. Ones. You got Taylor Swift. I have no idea who that is. Uh, he's Slumb. Oh, okay. Well, he's been he's, on, he used uh, to be in before. Yeah. Yeah, he's been in Duplex for a while. Uh, yeah, Lamb played Duplex yeah. a long time now. 
Yeah, and then there's Robbie and Slaycon. Um, I'm not exactly sure where those are from. Danny's an old NS1 player. There's Wait, Danny joined Duplex team. now? Yeah. Wow. That's quite oh, interesting. Yeah. But we'll see. I mean, Danny is really someone you, you really love to have on your team because he has the brain also, skills, he understands the game. Something... Yeah, he hasn't been all that into NS2. I haven't seen him play that much. Um, so I'm not sure what level he's at. But he's a good guy. He's a cool guy to be around. Yes. So even if he doesn't play that much, he's nice to have on your team just to create some atmosphere. The most interesting thing from Duplex is uh, if you go to their ENSL page and see the past members, there's like 3 billion people there. <laughs> yeah. I think we all I have know, been I've in Duplex, been didn't we? Except yeah. for B1? Yes. Oh, I'm <laughs> singled out. It's time to join and get kicked from it. Anyway. <laughs> join the NS history. Yeah, but this is a, it's interesting to see Duplex back. Oh, it's one of the oldest teams. Um, they've been dead for a while, but uh, if they can get this roster going, they might be uh, back in uh, Division 1 form. It's going to be nice to have another Division 1 team. So I hope they will be able to get active and uh, play some games together. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so that's lots of changes on the teams, and we will expect more. I, honestly, as you introduced at the start, at summer, there will be lots of more dropping, lots more teams reforming, but with, with this whole stuff happening and uh, the top team being out for at least some months now, um, I think, the, and the balance mod coming in, which changes the game, the lure JIT, also a big topic, increasing the FPS, maybe some people come back and play it or enjoy the game more, because it's actually more smooth now to play, which was one of the big um, criticisms around there at the start for NS2, that it wasn't yeah. that smooth like NS1, so this is a big change, I think, for keeping it's gonna the be interesting. stable. It's going to be very interesting. I just want to say before we move entirely on, um, because we were talking about the balance in the balance mod, um, I see some comments here about uh, people objecting to uh, aliens being overpowered. Um, uh, especially one comment about uh, Fades dropping like flies on both sides. It was only Marine wins. Um, and I'm I'm sure that happens in some games, but that is mostly because uh, a lot of people playing the balance mod don't know how to play the new Fade. They don't know how to do correct tactics in the balance mod, how to properly exploit all the things that are there. Um, when I played the balance mod, I've played with decent teams against other decent teams um, who have uh, quite a bit of experience playing the balance mod who know exactly what they're doing and exploit all the new features to the max and in those matches it has been nearly impossible to win as aliens I can... Uh, as I can... marines yeah, as marines I mean, nearly impossible to win as marines um, I can guarantee you 100% well it's stupid to say 100 99% there's going to be a lot of alien ties in this cup so maybe a lot of marine cheese tries as a response yeah, might be a lot of cheese and of course there are a lot of teams here who don't have a lot of experience with the balance mode, so between those teams it might be a bit different, but let's say from the quarterfinals on, there is going to be a lot of alien ties. Of course, the, a lot of matches in the group stages are going to be 4 0s because it's, um, the teams aren't balanced, basically. There's a lot of good teams playing against less good teams. Well, it looks like Juba still disagrees, but, well, everyone has its own opinion now, so <laughs> let's just go by well, that's that. That's interesting, I guess. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we have this mod now. We will see tons of matches, and we'll basically just see what will happen. I think it's a pretty much stable build now because early on, um, Andy Sulek, whatever he felt, they changed the mod for really often, even like five patches a day. So I think this is um, down now to stable build, so we can see the current version how it really plays out, and we will take all the feedback and well, do an official build out of that, I guess. So, um, yeah, talking about the performance increase, and I mean, with all that stuff happening all around in the scene, and new teams forming up, more performance coming in here, um, opportunities for other teams to take rounds, I think this is a, still, even with the player drops in the summertime, an interesting time, especially when maybe early fall, when the teams come back, or players in general come back, they will find a new game with a complete new gameplay, when the banner, whatever is implemented then there, which is much more performant from what I've seen so far um, and has a complete new team sc scene so it's like it's completely reshuffled, the cards are completely new out there and everything can happen from here and I think this is pretty exciting in general because the whole year it was 
Arkeo winning, maybe then Exertus popping up, another team, next or whatnot. This this went on stable for months now, for many many months, and now we have this kind of so many crazy changes going on. And so if NS2 pretty much yeah survives the summer, I have to say, and comes back in the fall as it's a complete new game, I feel. Bobby Mendes not agreeing, I see. <laughs> mm. uh. <laughs> I love you. I love you, my favorite Spanish. <laughs> I tell you that every time. <laughs> oh yeah. Well give you input then. Go. Well yeah, the game will obviously change after the summer. Um like there's lots of uh, factors that are making the whole thing change and like I don't know, like I'm thinking mostly about my team right now. So yeah, but the performance, the balance test should make people interested in NS2 again. And if the event that we're going to talk about is uh, successful, it will help too. So I'm really looking forward to uh, how everything is after the summer. Yep. Yeah. Uh... I was thinking we, we were supposed to do a show, right, about uh, balance mode as well. Maybe for the next one. Yes. Af yes. After the whole uh, cup has finished, the balance cup has finished and stuff. Exactly. So we'll yeah. actually go more more in depth into uh, the, uh, the changes. The balance. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we planned this for weeks, but we of course that didn't want to go without any kind of real experience in that. So we're waiting for now. I mean, we will see what will happen. I mean, what will be changed? What is the experience you all gain and gather about that? I mean, there's already disagreement about here. Like Fana saying it's just alien wins and Huber completely disagrees. I mean, we'll, that's basically the point. We want to go in depth in this whole topic on the next episode. So um, definitely. Uh, kind of want to find out also how the uh, cup runs. Well, like Fana said, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, the results and stuff. We're definitely gonna see a lot of uh, different strats going on, I think. Yeah, that's gonna be an exciting part. I mean, how many really new strategies are available now? Um, is the really, I mean, the Alien Commander, which has so many new features now, is this all viable or is just 20 person really interesting and the rest is just, you know, completely overload, which is not used at all? It's this whole kind of topics. Um, really want to do a more in detailed episode about that in the future but um to the more recent events i mean you already i mean are we finished with the seniors bobby yes i think so all right we're finished with the seniors so great so going on the next one or the last one the big announcement you might be all might already have read it on underworld's forum site or enosl.org because we just hit the news there um at the same time, just before going live here, so I don't have to do it in the show. And this is the whole thing is called the European Open 2013. Um, let me actually go, there's a picture of that. Let me, let me see, where's the picture? Okay, I'm gonna fail now because I have to search the picture. There we go. There should be. Oh, yeah. Mm, that's Nations Cup. What? No, 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 that was the old one. Um, yeah, of course it's the old one. <laughs> let me just change it. Look at that. There we go. Do you see it? European yes. Open? Okay, there's a delay, a slight delay for you. Alright, so this whole thing, I mean the details in there, this is um, first exciting, but of course this is another um, with help by Unknown World sponsored event, which has a live stage final. This time it's gonna be in UK. Um, pretty important to know, this is European only. This is not because Honor Worlds hates Americans or so, they would love to do the same for America. Um, Maybe they hate Americans. I mean, they hate <laughs> <laughs> You got. Oh god, no, basically, um, it's easier to get this whole stuff handled in European and to keep the cost lower so we can do it. The idea is to have more regular events and not like just one or twice twice a year. So maybe do that more regularly if this whole calculates out better. And so this is basically the idea behind it. So having this European only, but um, it's still a blast to have. It's gonna be in the UK. Insomnia is actually Insomnia Gaming Event. You can check it out. Um, I think the first results in Google will 
put it there, someone can put up a link probably in the chat. And why I am personally so gr uh, heavily excited about it is because I have the chance to cast it, the finals on the stage, together with Ryan, you. And where this whole thing comes in, pops in now for the teams, is that this is a try to um, see Animal Worlds is sponsoring, you know, the whole flights, the accommodation of the teams, like everything, like usual. But on the price pool, this is this kind of... Um, every dollar or euro the community spends, or there is a GoFundMe campaign, um, they will put up another dollar. They're matching basically every dollar we spend in there from the community. So if we get a, like $1,000 for price pool, they will put in another $1,000. And we will have $2,000 price pool, and it would be pretty cool. Do you know where uh, the donation is going to be? Um, have we told anything about that? There is a link. There is a link. Give it. Let me post the link now in the chat. There's also a link on all the news on NSL and on um, Other Worlds page. But there is a link. I didn't check it right now. Maybe there's already some money dropped in there. And yes, yeah, so um, we will have this event. So basically, what we do have is three weeks of play time. Right after the Balance Mod Cup, it will start. So the signups will close on basically the finals of the Balance Mod. Which is 23rd June. And then we have two weeks for the group stages and one week for the playoffs. And. Yeah, so there's already been $360. That's pretty nice. Yeah, Unknown Worlds has put 200 yeah, already. Two. So. Mm. To, 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 like, just in case, I guess. <laughs> yeah, just in case. Okay, wait, there's 360. Three, uh, if there's $360, they will put another $360, so we at least already have $720 uh, price money. Right now, just like 30 minutes after our announcement, which is pretty I awesome. Think, like, just the opportunity of uh, flying there and meeting other players uh, live is just uh, a great price in itself. Yep. So, but yeah, that's also uh, awesome if there's another price. Yep, the more prizes the better. So, uh, I mean, Fana, Fana, I have to ask: uh, Do you think RKS is going to be able to participate for this, or not? No, we <laughs> are. Uh, as I already said, we're taking a summer break. Yeah. Okay. So this is a golden opportunity for all those other teams to uh, not get knocked out by us. <laughs> okay. Golden opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dollar opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, and I have to say, um, I'm not sure if you guys have talked about this already, but uh, this is in the middle of the summer, so I am a bit unsure about uh, the turnout for this tournament, but I'm sure we're going to see some good teams um, sign up either, and I'm sure there might be even some mixes signing up. Um, and it's going to be very interesting because it's, it's, I think it's going to be hard to tell who is um, like the dominant team. I think it's going to be close to impossible. Um, so, sort of an anyone can win scenario, and that's interesting. Exactly. Full heartedly agree. And talking about the summer break, I really hope there's space for 16 teams actually to sign up. And so, well, for summer, I hope we will get those 16 teams. But with um, interest price pool included, I, I think, and with there's no like safe, um, we will drop out in the first round to Akira or something. Uh, um, as long as there's still two teams, we can just go straight to UK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> straight to UK with two teams, exactly. So, in another part, there will also be a new map revealed on the 24th August when the finals will appear. Don't worry, you're not forced to play it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it will be revealed. So, I mean, NS2 is still in progress. There's, um, I mean, which is pretty cool that it's still getting developed with all the stuff, even after it's released like over seven months ago. People are still working on that. And yeah, I'm trying to think about more stuff to put in because, um, which is pretty important. If you want to sign up for this and need more information, this will come in the next few hours on the NSL page. Um, there was absolutely no time to fill out everything just before this. Um, <laughs> it was just um, too crazy time schedule. I mean, the draft is um, the announcement is there. Just check in a few hours to see how to sign up, and the contest will be putting up there. So. It will be open 
pretty soon. Like. Mendes was good at taking part of this. Yes. Yes. Like, I was actually looking if we could uh, sign up right now, but it's not up yet. <laughs> but yeah. Right. Then. We're, we're gonna play. We're gonna play everything. Uh, even fun, I might try to get a, find a mixed team just for that. I don't know. Uh, oh, I'm not gonna do anything. We can uh, we can let him play for Goddard for a fee. <laughs> <laughs> we can make I don't it think Jaywall would like that. Are you sure? I'm not sure if I would like that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I think he would enjoy it quite a bit. And actually... Jaywall is made of troll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen. Yes. <laughs> That's that's yeah. That was one of the evilest laughs I've ever heard. <laughs> the yeah, the most troll comp ever in NS. Oh. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, about um, like I I think I already mentioned this, but I'm gonna mention it again. I I am mostly taking a break now. If some if something interesting happens, I might play, but um, most likely you won't see me in this cup or any other cup this summer. You heard it, guys. You will not get knocked out by Fana, whatever team. He's not, join not joining. More chances for you. More prize money for others, like B1, who's thinking about joining a new team. Hmm. Hmm, am I? <laughs> 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 oh, we'll Obviously. I'm kind of on a break as well right now. Okay. So. so the only tricky part, basically, around this tournament is the timing of the balance test and the balance mods on the patch and everything else. Yeah, there is a pretty short time frame here for them to uh, make the balance mod mm, balanced. Or at least make the things they're going to implement into the game balanced. Exactly. So it's going to be a hectic, a hectic uh, few weeks for them. Yep. So, I mean, the finals will definitely play on a new official build, which is right long time after the balance mod coming out, but so far, of course, there's no official time line there, and yeah, the tricky part could be that the first day of group stages are this kind of balance version, and next day is official new build. <laughs> that's something that can happen. I hope it won't, but um, yeah, that's a tricky part. And how do you do that? I mean, on all kinds, this is not easy to handle with the timeline we all have. I am. I am scared that it's going to happen something similar to what happened in the Invitational, um, where maybe we have to play vanilla to qualify, and then suddenly we have all the changes at once for the next stage, or the day before, or something crazy. It, yeah, it, it's been it, a bit unfortunate. Actually, every like big sponsor tournament has had a patch um, like the a day before the qualifier. Or a week before the qualifier, uh, which is not really. You need more time than that to adjust. Um, uh, it was pretty funny with the Invitational. We actually had a big patch um, just before the qualifier and a patch just before the actual final. Uh, it was awkward. And the first, uh, the first Cologne event also had. Um, that was actually released. Uh, or, yeah, that was released like a week before the final, and that was big changes. It was a bit nuts. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's yeah, awkward. I think you you hit the nail there. The problem is, it's it does make things part. a bit interesting too, though. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah, another point. But it's on one part unavoidable. I mean, if you, I mean, this whole thing has to go. This patch needs to go. This needs to go as soon as possible. But if there is bugs and whatnot, you you cannot push like a date. If you say like, oh, okay, after the finals of balance mod, we hit this update now. Everything can happen depending on the feedback, depending on the game state. I mean, this is software. Um, if it's get pushed another week, then there's nothing you can do about it. And the timeline for the cup is also pretty much set and tight. So. Um, I mean, stuff can happen, and it's pretty much unavoidable, but it makes also, as I said, things more interesting, maybe. I hope so. Okay, so, um, more information on that will be on enosl.org or also on unonrolls.com, and I think the one hour is up, so I'm going to wrap it now, um, because we went into lots of 
topics now. This cup is gonna be, I mean, next episode definitely there will be more stuff to talk about, um, depending on, I mean, on the balance mod, on the changes, on in-depth analysis and news about this European Open Cup as well, how it goes, how it proceeds, if the donation is successful, the campaign and whatnot, the feedback so far, the times who, uh, the teams who signed up so far up till this time. I mean, it's summer as as we all notice and to get those 16 teams is also interesting yeah so i think that's it for this episode yeah, i, I, I want to say okay. one thing before we wrap this up because um we haven't talked about the i'm gonna be real quick here we haven't talked about the teams in the balance cup it's like the balance cup is starting now so we're not gonna have another opportunity to talk about it so we may as well talk about the teams participating just real quickly um Should. and this is going to be a really interesting cup, in part because uh, of the crazy changes in the balance cup, uh, balance mod. I mean, um, none of the teams have fully adjusted to this. None of the teams, even the ones who've been playing it a lot, um, know everything about this or know how to play. So the tactics are probably going to be a bit crazy. You're going to see a lot of unconventional chamber choices. You're going to probably see a lot of. Um, uh, it's not called sensory chambers. What's it called? Shades. You're going to see shades used. You're going to see uh, shifts used. You're going to see celerity. You're going to see uh, cloaking. Oh, it's not called cloaking anymore. You're going to see a lot of crazy upgrades. Uh, and you're going to see a lot of crazy tech paths. And you're going to see drifters flying around, spamming clouds of stuff. You're going to see max running around building stuff. Um, a lot of strange stuff is going to happen. And drifters building stuff? Yeah, that's it's also awesome. something. Drifters building stuff. Um, basically a lot of new stuff. Uh, and the teams don't really know exactly what to do. And, of course, um, we have a lot of teams uh, who either because the usual dominant teams aren't participating uh, or because they themselves are having some roster problems, um, we have a lot of teams that basically are on the level. Um, I mean, we have... Uh, I, th I think we can say that Snails, the, uh, the new French team, Legendary Snails, and Godar are the favorites. Um... I guess usually meow. I would say, oh, say Godard. Yeah. Well, uh, let's talk about that. Um, at least I, my opinion would be usually that I, from the the offset, I would say the Godar would be the favorites because they have so much experience playing together, and they have a really solid team. Um, but they have been uh, very inactive lately, and as Mendas was saying, they are having some activity problems. Um, not enough uh, players to play. Uh, and they haven't played the balance mod a lot. Uh, of course, they've been playing on publics, I assume, so they know what's going on. Um, well, and some positive... we've been playing uh, the French team uh, um, yeah. for like a week, um, one or two games, but it's usually very late into the day. It's like at uh, 10 p.m. every day, if we can play. Yeah, um, but, I uh... think you, uh, you and uh, Snails have been um, the most active uh, PCWing teams as well. Uh, Meow has also been playing a bit, but from the top teams, I'm saying. I think Ayo um, is playing a lot, as much as he can with his team. Yeah, uh, Meow, I played a bit with Meow. Um, they have been practicing a little bit, but not that much. It's like maybe two or three pieces of obvious a week, max. Um, but yeah, I, I think Godard and Snails have uh, are, have like the, the stamp of favorites, but I don't think it's clear-cut. There's a lot of other teams who can, uh, who can come up and beat them. Um, but those are the teams with the, I would say, the most, uh, the, the, the highest quality players and the most, the most sort of average, um, uh, high quality. Um, a lot of the other teams have weak links and whatnot, um, or are untested, etc. But we also have, um, Nexel, um, the new Nexel. They are unfortunately not as good as the old Nexel, I think, but they still have good players. They still have... Um, a lot of experience playing, so they might be a contender. And then, of course, we have uh, Meow, who Blind mentioned. Um, not the old Meow, this is a new Meow. Uh, with, um, well, it's, it's, it's a lot of Meow players, but um, it's also... Uh, <laughs> Meow haven't really been playing together, so it's not really Meow, it's more like a mix. And they also have Skugan playing for Mark. Um, I might end up playing a few games for them yet. Uh, I'm not sure yet, um, but we'll see. Uh, but uh, Meowdo has high quality players, but not a lot of practice playing together. Um, so I, I'm not sure if I would count them as a favorite. They're more like a dark horse. Um, and then there is uh, the new duplex, 
I would not expect them to do uh, to play that highly, but they could surprise us. They have good players. Um, and then there is uh, Damage Networks, solid American team, a um, lot of good players. Um, they got Gorgeous, uh, I see they got Blink on the team, um, and a lot of other good players, basically. Um, so they might be uh, might be a contender, actually. Uh, and then, of course, there's this Australian team, Seraphic Nexus, um, that I don't really think any of us know how good they are or how good they aren't. Um, Actually, to just break you in there, I mean, talking yeah. about the scene the whole time, we didn't really talk lots about the oceanic scene or just Australian. I think general, we don't really but... know what's going on down there. Um, 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 they were pretty some... good when we played them with Sweden. I mean, we did, we, we were on like 250 ping, but it's still, they were pretty good. They gave a hell of a fight, at least. Yeah, Yeah, I heard it was a really long fight, but it was still a 3-0, which is like, yeah. Uh, if, yeah. if you put it down to that one, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, you can win 3 0 by a ruffle storm, or if you have a good fight, at least. And I, I yeah, think. True. I mean, on the changes, what we missed on the Australian scene is there also the summer break going on, and it's also getting interesting if the Australian league will pop up for season 3 or not, or if they would get mixed to an American as well. Um, unfortunately, um, the. League admin of their, um, which was LOD or left or just went inactive as well. So yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot of um, a lot of connections in Australia, basically, unsurprisingly. But um, the impression I get is that the Australian scene is very inactive right now. Um, they don't have a lot of teams playing, um, but this team is supposedly pretty good. And um, like Bobby says, they did well against Sweden, even though it was a three out Sweden. Uh, so they might uh, do well here. And the ping thing is... You never know what's going to happen when you play with high ping. Crazy shit can happen. So I, I think they might be a contender. Uh, I think they're at least going to go through to the playoff stages. Uh, how far they go, who knows? They're sort of, yeah, I guess they're a dark horse too. Even a dark horse of... <laughs> okay. a lot of... This entire tournament is a bunch of dark horses, really. <laughs> I think this is going to be an extremely exciting playoff stage where you can't really tell who is going to win. We might end up with two completely ex unexpected teams in the final. I guess not. Um, I would assume at least we're going to see one or more of Legendary Snails, Godar, um, Meow, and maybe Nexel or Damage Networks. But uh, we'll see. Yep. Okay. All right, I have found a permission to wrap up and close. So, I mean, it was interesting. Yeah, absolutely right as always. Talk about that. Take the chance and possibly many upsets to follow. And we will see and talk about that definitely in the next episode if there is this kind of upset coming up. So, um, yeah, that's it for this show. And Bobby, Bobby, do you do you want to just fly? Do the honor. <laughs> to the honor. Well, uh, I just want to say that uh, special thanks to Mendes for jumping in for Scribe. It's really nice of you. Of course, I'm always nice, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Oh, oh, uh, Mendes, he promised me next time he has a webcam. He promised yeah, me. Yes, yeah, I, yes, I promised. Yes, yes. yes. No. <laughs> no more right. promising anything. Actually, I'm promising uh, I won't have a webcam. Boom. I didn't ask you even. I, I know you won't show yourself. Do you, do you really think I need someone to ask me for me to start talking? <laughs> I, I think Mendes should, should do the uh, outro this time. What? He's the new guy. <laughs> the new guy! <laughs> 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 like a prank! <laughs> <laughs> Can I uh, press all my Sombor buttons at the same time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I have a lot of buttons, I must say. I also just want to remind you that the uh, highlights is coming up uh, within two hours, one or two hours on YouTube. You can find it on youtube.com slash blindns, or it's also going to be news posted on ensl.org, so sure to check it out. Check it out. Uh, yes, and that's it for this show, this episode. Say it. So, just say it. Say it. So, um, until next time, this is showtime. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <Boom. laughs>